Hey everybody, this is the way my fuel tank skid currently looks and in this video I'm going to show you how to change it. Some of the steps here are the same as when you replace the fuel straps so I reused a couple of clips from that video that I made. You want to lift the rear left portion of the car at this point otherwise the jack will get in the way of the skid plate and prevent it from being able to be taken off. My skid was completely rusted and when I tried to get this back bolt off originally, it broke right away. So you might have some difficulty with this bolt and I'll show you what I did to fix this in a little bit. This is probably the most difficult bolt to get to. This is the passenger side front. Since this front bolt is up and kind of out of the way, it's above the drive shaft, it doesn't see the same elements as the back bolt. So mine wasn't very corroded and it came off really easily once I got it started. I left it hanging on by a couple of threads to make taking out the other ones easier so the skid plate wouldn't just fall off on me. Next up are these three bolts at the front driver's side. I previously had these bolts off when I did the back strap, but this diagram shows why you have to be really careful when you're taking out these bolts. These are either a 12 or a 14 millimeter. Again, I left these in just a few threads to hold the skid on so the whole thing didn't fall off and break itself to pieces. There's also this bolt in the back. It's on the driver's side for taking off the fuel skid. I didn't show removing it because my support completely rusted out, but you're gonna have to remove this bolt too. I'll show the support that rusted out in a second after the skid is shown on the ground. I used a jack stand here to help support the skid plate before I took it off. Just gave me a third hand to hold it up so it didn't fall off sideways or crooked. It doesn't weigh a lot, it's just awkward and mine was falling apart. I'm using a jack stand here to support the fuel tank. And I'm doing this because I'm replacing that front strap and it's really rusty. So I wasn't sure if the whole thing would be held up by those straps. If your straps are in good condition, you do not have to do this. But for additional safety, or if your straps are bad, you can throw ratchet straps around the fuel tank and secure it to the frame using ratchet straps. This is how my skid looked the first time I took it off. And if yours looks this bad, I wanna know. This is what the bottom of the fuel tank looks like with the skid removed. Here are some of the holes where that original skid plate came off and this is the back strap, the one that I had already replaced. Every time I remove a bolt from my Forerunner, I run a tap through the existing threaded holes so that the new bolt doesn't get damaged when it gets installed in those threaded holes and to make it a lot easier on the installation process. To speed this process up, if your threads aren't too screwed up, you can use a drill bit and just run the tap in and run it out and save some time. I'm cleaning these threads out with brake parts cleaner. Here's the hardware I'm using, class 10.9, zinc plated. It should easily thread in. I often hear these horror stories from other Toyota owners talking about how they had to drill out multiple bolts. I have to do this all the time. I just don't always show it. So I'll show you how I got the back bolt out and all the problems I encountered doing so. My first try was using a titanium drill bit, a small bit, and it was working, but I had to apply a ton of pressure up and it was very difficult to hold the drill in that position that long. I came up with this idea where I could apply some pressure with the jack stand to the bottom of the drill and push it up into the hole. This was working excellently. I was all the way through the bolt. At the very end of the bolt, I was probably an inch deep but at the very end, I pushed it too hard. I got a little overzealous. And the titanium bit broke off. And if you've ever tried to drill out titanium, it's, it's impossible. My next attempt was using a punch. 
often the nuts that are welded onto the square tubular frames of Toyotas or on these brackets, you can punch out with a punch and the nut will come flying off because they're usually just tack welded on. This one did not come off. The next most destructive method is to employ an air hammer as shown. Boom, that worked. After I got that nut broken off, I straightened the bracket out with a pair of vice grips. The problem here is that the weld was right next to the fuel tank. So I had to be careful that I did not ignite the fuel tank. I wrapped it in my welding jacket and I isolated it with wood to make sure it would not blow the tank up. Before I did this, I checked that it did not smell like fuel. I had a fire extinguisher right next to me, but there's always some risk involved here. I don't recommend doing this, but I did it. And if you ever do too, you might as well make it pretty. Hey everybody, making these videos takes a ton of time and a ton of effort. If you would do one quick thing for me, it would mean the world to me. Please subscribe to my channel and then after you subscribe, hit the little bell notification and turn on all notifications. This would help me out immensely. I don't post a lot of videos, but when I do, I make sure they're really high quality so I'm not gonna be blowing up your notification inbox or anything like that. But this will boost my channel in the YouTube algorithm and it'll help me out so much. Have a good day, keep crushing it. Here's my newly repaired bracket and I'm just gonna put a nut on the other side of this with the hardware that's supplied by RCI Off-Road. And this bracket is supplied with the skid plate as well and this is for the rear right portion of the car. Next up is this front right bracket and it's really easy to install. Next up is the rear left powder coated bracket. Just so you know ahead of time, you're probably gonna have to take this skid plate off a couple times during this installation process. Mine was rubbing the plastic fuel tank very significantly and I had to bend this out a little bit to get adequate clearance. My camera fell over but I used this jack handle to get more leverage. For the reinstallation you can use the jack stand to help you out here. Then put this front right bolt in. There's enough clearance where you can get your fingers around and access the bolts from the inside of the skid plate. Then the back right Back left. And then lastly, these front three left bolts. I did not see this step anywhere else, but you wanna run a piece of paper down the side of the skid plate and make sure that it's not pressing really hard against your plastic fuel tank. If this skid slowly rubbed a hole in your tank over time, that would be a problem you do not want to have. Here are just a couple of parting shots. This is the way it looks at the end. I was really happy with the build quality of RCI Off-Road. The hardware was awesome. Everything went smoothly. A little bit of tweaking was required, but I'd expect that from aftermarket parts. Overall, I'm really impressed.